Hey, this is Terry, and uh, in this video I just want to give you a quick little Prisma app tour. There's lots going on in the app, and there are a lot of options available to you. And In fact, we're going to split this up into a couple of different videos. This first one will be kind of setting up the Prisma products and the various source options that you have, input options that you have. And then we'll do another one on kind of going through the NAS, controlling a NAS drive, a local area connected network. But for setting up your product, this is the video to watch. And so what we'll do is we've already gone through using Google Home uh, to set up and connect to the network the Prisma product. And now once we've done that, we'll simply open the Prisma app and we will see the devices that we have set up. Now, I've gone ahead and in addition to the i35 Prisma I use in my home system every day, um, I've set up a couple of uh, products that you see behind me uh, specifically for this filming to make the, the video filming a little bit easier. And what I want to do is just go in and set up the i35 filming speaker that you can see on the screenshot. And I'll go in there and then we'll have up on the upper left we'll see a menu row. It says source, queue, playlist, zone, and settings. And the first thing I really want to do is go to settings. And once we go there you'll see that I have the ability to go in and work with source, input, audio, general, and streaming settings as well as provide a little bit of information about the, the firmware, the software uh, technology that is installed in the Prisma. Um, you can press that information button. You can see that the Prisma app version is there. Go into system information and it shows me all of the data regarding my i35 filming speaker and the Wi-Fi connection that is in place. In fact, it's even showing me the CD35 as well as the i35 if we scroll down. And so with that, let's go back to the top and look at source settings. And it shows there then add media server, add music service. Now I already have a, a hard drive connected to my main system, but because because I have that connected to the network and now have set up these other products to the network, I have to do, have, don't have to do anything else, I can hit add media server and what will pop up is my primary minimum server. Uh, so I select the primary minimum service and then I hit continue. Then I go down to add music service. Now I listen to predominantly Tidal or Spotify, so I will select Tidal and I will select Spotify and those will be the services that will show up in the source menu page that I'll show you in just a little bit. Obviously there are other suggestions here, Deezer, TuneIn Radio, Cobuzz Music, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, the list goes on and on and on. Um, but for my purposes I'll use Tidal and Spotify. So I'll hit continue and we have now done our source settings. I'll close that up. So once we've set our source settings we'll go to input settings. And now in this simple system what I've done is I've added the CD35 using unbalanced inputs. And so that would be a3 is where I've connected it to. And so when I go into any of these input settings, I can do a number of different things, and I will do those now to the A3 setting. So the first thing is alias. And so I can go in here, and with six characters, I can type in a name I want to assign to this input. And so I want to call it CD35. I will call it CD35, hit OK, and now that will be the CD35 input. I can go down and then there's the ability to enable or disable inputs. I want this input enabled, so I will leave it at enabled as you can see it on the screen. Um, otherwise, if it is an empty input, if I'm not using it, I can go in and hit disabled. I can hit that enabled button. It will disable it, and that means I won't see it in the menu and then I don't have to worry about it. It won't clutter my choices when I'm going to select music. When we go down to AutoSense, this is an interesting one. AutoSense gives us two abilities. One, to select, meaning that when it auto senses or senses a signal, it will select that input. I can go to wake and select. And so if the i35 is in standby and I decide to play a CD disc or, or use the CD35 Prisma to stream some music, the minute that disc begins to play, the minute the streaming service begins to play, the i35 will wake up out of standby, select that input and begin playing back at my preset volume, my default, default volume setting, which is just below. And so when it comes to volume, there's variable volume and fixed volume, and what variable volume means is that that input is controlled by the volume knob on the i35. Now, in my main system, I have one of my inputs on my i35 set to fixed volume, and that's for home theater pass-through. So I can use the i35 as my front stereo amplifier. Now, because that will mean that it will set that amp to unity gain, or at volume level 66 out of available 99, that's really loud.
And so you want to make sure that you don't have that set for something that you want to have the volume control be controlled by the i35. In this case, I want the volume to be controlled by my processor, my multi-channel processor. So I'll hit fixed. It will ask me, just to confirm that I haven't made a mistake, whether I want this at the fixed volume setting, and it says warning loud volume. And so if I wanted to, I would press yes, and this input would be fixed. But in this case, I want to keep it at variable, so I will say no, it automatically goes back to variable volume. Now input gain. There are certain instances where you want to have input gain adjusted up or down to make everything sound at relatively the same level during because of various outputs that it might have, particularly with phono stages maybe being up and down, or with multi-channel processors in fixed volume where you need to have the gain up or down to make sure that things like wake and select work or that all of the volume settings are appropriate and balanced for your system. You can make that adjustment there. And so all those input settings are in play and you can use that for all the different inputs. You can adjust it. Now if we go into audio settings, this gives us balance. We can just set the balance left or right, which is pretty self-explanatory. But startup volume is important. And that's that volume that I spoke of when we're in wait and select. When it comes out of standby, this is the volume level that it will go at. And I tend to recommend keeping it a little bit lower. I happen to just set things to 22 to start. And then you can go down for startup volume. We see below maximum volume. 99 is full output that will be very loud, if not damagingly loud. So what I want to do, I can use either the up and down plus buttons, or I can just slide it. And I tend to then go to 66, which is unity gain, as being the loudest volume possible. And so it's easier here to hit the specific by using the plus and minus buttons. So I've done that. And so now I've set maximum volume for that input setting. I can set a mute volume as well. And because I want to hear it when, I, when it's muted, I don't want it completely off to know that the system might be playing in mute mode. I set it to a very low volume setting, but enough to be able to be heard. And so in this case, I set it to 11. And in audio settings, you can also set digital output, depending upon if you have this connected to another DAC. And you can choose either 96 or 48. It's just whatever it ever works best for the DAC that you have it set at. So we're done with audio settings. We can go to general settings. And this allows us to show all inputs or just show those that have signal. And so that it then limits the amount of uh, inputs you have available or showing anyway in the menu system, making it a less cluttered view. I tend to keep to show all inputs in part because I only enable those that I'm actively using usually or that I have connected. So that um, is something that you may or may not want to use. Front panel unlocked or locked. Lock this thing if you have little kids because they will come up and turn the knobs. This is too pretty for them not to have their curiosity peaked and playing around with this. Auto dim, this means the front display will dim in a period of time, either one, five, ten minutes, or never dim. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to put never dim so it just doesn't go out on us, uh, so we can still see it maybe glowing lightly in the background. LED brightness, this allows you to change the level of brightness on the LED according to the level of the uh, OLED display that you've got, and those are the little standby menu lights. And so you can do all kinds of adjustments there in LED brightness. Now one of the important things is standby settings that I've just clicked on and it's just below then um, the LED lighting levels and in order for wake and select to work you need to keep it in normal setting. If you want to conserve on power uh, consumption, you can hit echo, but I tend to keep it on normal so that I can use wake and select because I found that to be very useful. Auto standby, um, uh, this is self-explanatory. If it doesn't get a signal for a certain period of time, you can set it to 10, 15, 20 minutes, it'll turn itself off. Again, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna set never because I don't want it to turn itself off. Now below that is factory settings. And that's important because if you go in there, it allows you to go to a factory default. In other words, clear out the unit. And um, there are instances where, because this is effectively a computer, you may need to effectively reboot. And that's one of the means that you can do that. You just erase all the settings, start again. Um, and that's something that um, can be useful if it's required. Now, Below that, the final thing is show is stream settings, and we have show metadata. I've got it currently enabled, but to a certain degree, the display is smaller. We wanted to have an OLED that was absolutely reliable, so that it would be uh, able to be used for the lifespan of the product. Um, it's a little bit tiny, uh, but we also made it that way because we knew that all the metadata would be in the palm of your hand. It would be in your mobile device. It would be in the tablet that you're using. And so in that case, you might want to just know what input you're on to be able to confirm what input you're on. 
And so if you go into show metadata and you don't enable it, what will happen is that the display will simply show you whatever your input is in a large screen so you can easily see it and never have to worry about it. I'm gonna switch it back to metadata just for fun, but know that that's an option for you because the metadata will be in the palm of your hand. Bluetooth settings. I would keep these at disabled in both cases so that someone casually getting Bluetooth connected to your system doesn't turn the volume up very, very loud. But obviously if you want them visible, if you want to be able to auto connect, just hit those settings as appropriate. AirPlay password, if you're going to be using AirPlay, you'll want to go in and set this password up. I'm not using it currently, so I will hit cancel. And otherwise, once you're through with these settings, you have set everything up within your inputs. The only other thing is to take a look at your source settings. And what we can see there then is we can hit cast services. We see all the available cast services that you could possibly want to play. Um, we can go in, we can go in and show all of the inputs that are available, that are enabled. And under this field, it will show you all of the inputs that you've enabled, not those that you've disabled. Going into local music, that means simply what is available on your tablet or on your mobile device. Um, if you have a USB thumb drive plugged into the back of the Prisma unit, hitting USB will allow you access to that. You'll notice here that then below that USB I have a Spotify and Tidal. Those are the streaming services I selected to have up in this menu system. My primary minimum server is there because I selected that in settings. And then in the music library it also shows me the variety of different servers that I might have available. In this case I only have the primary minimum server. Now, you'll notice that on this menu field I have Spotify duplicated. Now there are two different ways to access Spotify. One is through the Chromecast platform. It doesn't have quite a high as resolution as the Spotify Connect version. So to a certain extent, if you're gonna be listening to Spotify, it's probably the best choice to go ahead and just select Spotify from that bottom icon at the bottom of the menu. But in either case, you'll be able to use those streaming services seamlessly. And remember that when you press that, so for example, if I press title, I'm gonna go out of the Prisma app and go directly to the Tidal app. And so this means that whether I'm listening or using my tablet, I can use a mobile device as well, now to stream any of these mobile services I want to stream. I don't need to use the Prisma app for this. In fact, I should have started out this video with the idea that the Prisma app is really there to do two things. This setup function that I've just described, and then control and connect with your NAS drive, your local area NAS drive. And that will be our next video. So if you go to our channel or to our website, primer.net, you can find out more information about all of our Prisma products and how to set them up, how to use them, and other details that you might find important.